Corruption is a widespread problem across the world. But for Nigeria, corruption has eaten deep into the roots of various institutions and arm, arms of government. The, the Buhari-led administration came into power with the intention to fully fight corruption and persecute those found guilty. But so far, not many corruption cases have been followed through to conclusion. Uh, this has been due to a number of reasons in the Nigerian judicial system. One factor that has uh, delayed the logical conclusion of many cases is the antics played by accused persons to evade justice in many cases. And it appears that uh, probing Nigerians with cases to answer has resulted in some of them uh, feigning illnesses and uh, suddenly taking ill. Some have even mastered the art of fainting, using neck braces and using crutches to uh, show the severity of their conditions. So many Nigerians have acted this script in a bit to delay answering to the law. So what do you think about this? So joining me in the studio to discuss this is lawyer Olutumbosun Oshifora to help us make sense of all of this from the eyes of the law. Good morning, Bosun. Good morning. No, it's a pleasure. You're welcome. Very fine. And uh, now the, the <coughs> point is, since the last um, decade, I must say, the last decade has, has seen a lot of drama, you know, from persons, either people who were governors or people who were lawmakers or government officials at one point or the other, after their tenures, you know, uh, they are called to answer one or two questions and then drama ensues. Oh, I'm not feeling well, you know, we see pictures, we see videos, we see drama of all kinds. Uh, talk to us basically, why is this happening and, and in the eyes of the law, where do all these stand? Okay, I think we should start like this. Mm. One, um, any time there is prosecution mm. or somebody is involved in a crime and then the authorities come after the person and they charge this person to court, mm. the, there is an essence of the law, there is a spirit of the law. What you are aiming to achieve is not necessarily to do anything other than recover what has been taken mm -hmm. by this person right. and also make sure that um, the person faces the wrath of the law. Now, but there is prosecution. It is not aimed at persecution. Okay. Now, so, and in the course of doing this, the provisions of the law, if you look at Section 36 of the 1999 Constitution, it says that anybody who is charged with an offense is presumed innocent, innocent exactly. until proven guilty. Mm -hmm. So in the course of prosecuting that person for a particular crime, you have to be careful. You have to be circumspect in your dealings. So you don't, you don't assume the person is guilty, regardless of the facts and evidence available to you, until the court says otherwise. It is only the court. I mean, there, there are a lot of cases that the court has, that has given vent to that position, that it is only a court of competent jurisdiction that can actually declare anybody facing criminal charges as a criminal. Mm. So and not even a judicial panel could do that. It's only a court of competent jurisdiction that could do that. So in the course of prosecuting that person, there are a lot of things, a lot of factors that come to bear, that come to play. Now, so that's the cardinal point is the one that I just said earlier, that mm. the person is innocent until proven guilty. Now, so you're trying to establish the crime. You're not trying to kill the person mm -hmm. or muzzle the person mm -hmm. or destroy the person. So once crime has been established, then the court can go ahead with sentencing and all the ancillary things that come with it. Mm -hmm. Now, so but in the course of it also, your rights are intact. Your fundamental rights are intact in, well, from, from arrest or invite or invitation to, mm -hmm. to the final point where judgment is given all your rights are supposed to be intact. Now, one of the rights that the Constitution avails you, the 1999 Constitution as amended, if you look at Section 35, it talks about, um, Section 35 talks about liberty, personal liberty. Right. Everybody is entitled to personal liberty. You can't just, I can't just hold you in the name of the law and hound you and do as I wish to you. Right. Though there are exceptions, but everybody is entitled to personal li liberty. It's a fundamental right, and it should not be tampered with. All right. Now, these, these, let's talk about these exceptions, because we've seen cases where 
someone is said, okay, he's told, okay, you have a case in court, so you need to just be in court on certain days. But we also see cases where people are detained for a, a period of time, and then they are expected to bring to be brought from their places of detention, either under uh, EFCC or under NDLE or under the, the whatever the thing is, you know, or from the cell, come and answer in court. So, w what are these exceptions? All right, break now, them down for us to understand. All right, now the combination of Section Thirty Five, mm. which is personal liberty, and also t Section Thirty Six, it talks about freedom mm. that you enjoy, is that. Um, you can't be hounded, except, now we go to the exceptions. Okay. The exceptions are one, if it's pursuant to a court order, where an order has been given that this person should be brought to court for prosecution for a criminal case, that's one. Where there's a communicable disease being spread, or likely to be spread by that person, then the person can actually, okay. your personal liberty can be They're withdrawn. withdrawn. Mm -hmm. Then also, in respect to education, particularly for a minor, your personal liberty too can be withdrawn because you have to be educated because part of the law, or the law also recognizes the need to educate its citizens. Mm. So if you have a kid who wants to just go on its own, I don't want to do this, the law permits that it's, it's, it's a personal liberty be curtailed. Now, so those are the things that also, in certain instances, majorly it has to do with courts, it has to do with court issuing an order mm. or pursuant to an arrest. Now, where you have, or where you are likely to commit a crime or where you have committed a crime, in those areas, your personal liberty will be curtailed. Mm. Now, then you go to the law, I mean, you go to the court, then you face the court, then you are also entitled by law to get a lawyer. In fact, the law provides the same um, section 35 going on to 36 says that where you are arrested, that um, you have a right to be silent mm. until you get a lawyer to come to your aid. Now, to your question, where somebody has been arrested based on what we've established, mm -hmm. the law provides that that same person must be charged to court that same day. Okay. Within now, 24 hours. Within 24 okay. hours. All right. Now, within, the law says within a reasonable time. Right. Now, so, but this is how it works. The, the, there's another provision of the law following that 24 hours that says that where a court is not within 40 kilometers or where arrest is done, you know, maybe later in the day, mm. there's no court sitting at night, mm. then they have to wait for a certain period, but it has to be maybe within 48 hours or within a reasonable period of time. Now, that is as far as that goes. Now, there's the Administration of Criminal Justice Law, which also permits... Um, some of these um, prosecuting authorities, certain times, you know, when they arrest someone, particularly where the person has just committed a crime and some things are still hazy. Mm. Now, there's a provision of the law that allows that authority to go to court and get an extension pending investigation. But it's never more than 30 days. Because if you have arrested someone, the law already provides that this person must be charged to court. Mm -hmm. Now, but if your investigation is still ongoing and you suspect that releasing this person on bail he might, is a flight risk or, I mean, he cannot just bail out, mm -hmm. then the best thing is to go to court. You can't do that on your own, holding him down. You have to go to court and by, by, by bringing certain applications to the court, then you get an extension to hold this person down pending investigation, then eventually you bring him to the court for right. prosecution. So, so, That's so only the court has the right to issue an, an instruction or an inst extension of holding someone, Absolutely. you know, while the person is coming to court to, to answer for whatever. Yes, because the, the, the premise is you have to be charged to court within a reasonable time, mm. 24 hours, 48 hours, wherever the court is located around you. Now, so where that happens also, but when investigation is ongoing by the um, prosecuting authority, mm. they need to go to court. If they're going to flout that part of the law or extend it, they can't do that on their own. Though we've seen instances where they've done that, but it is, it is ultra-virus. It is, it is against the law. And they can actually be held down. In fact, the, the Constitution says that you are entitled to bail. There's administrative bill, which can be given to you within them. Mm. Then there's a bill that you can actually go to court and get. And then the court will, you know, allow you to go on bail pending 
the prosecution when, of your when they talk about bail sometimes we 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 have we hear of bail conditions where you you need to get someone who has either landed property in certain cities and then uh, some amount of monies and is it the discretion of the of the judge to decide what should be the conditions you know there are two kinds of bill there's the administrative bill mm -hmm. which can be given to you by that um prosecuting authority mm -hmm. like EFCC, NDLEA, sometimes they invite people. The invite often doubles as an, like a, a warrant mm -hmm. of arrest. Now, so once they've listened to you and um, quizzed you, then they can allow you to go where they feel that. So that's like the administrative bill. That, then you come to the court. There's a bill that comes from the court, mm -hmm. which... The court, now in that instance, sometimes too for the administrative bill, the essence of asking you to bring somebody that has a landed property or a civil servant or somebody who is, mm. you know, well to do that has some connect within the society is that where they suspect that, I mean, we've seen instances where people can actually just jump bail. Mm -hmm. Of course, now, so seen and, several times. and some people can go as far as we've seen somebody jump bail in the UK dressed like a woman mm -hmm. come to. Mm. Now, so to avoid things like that, that's why they say, okay, bring certain shorties. In fact, all those things are provisions in the Constitution. So you can ask, they will ask for certain shorties, and then the shorties are supposed to stand in for you. They're supposed to be credible people who will stand in for you. So where you jump bill or where they can't find you, they call the shorty, then the shorty will produce you. Hmm. That's how it works. Now, so that's as far as bill goes. But there's certain, uh, coming to where we're going yeah. now, that there are certain instances, you know, I told you about the essence of the law. It's not to persecute, it's to prosecute and get to the end of the thing. Now, there are instances where, now coming from the premise where you're presumed innocent until proven guilty, there are instances where people genuinely fall ill, sometimes in detention, and they need medical attention. Now, when that is brought to court by the lawyer or by even the prosecuting counsel, then the court will look at that circumstance and allow that person to go. Because the essence is not to kill you. Mm. The essence is to establish the crime and punish you for the crime, not necessarily persecute you for that crime. Mm. Now, so, because the law is liberal in that regard, over time, with all due respect to my constituency, the legal practitioners often explore that angle and also exploit it to the extent that we've seen where people prepare certain individuals and then they cook up. The, there's an ongoing case where, you know, a prosecuting authority actually alerted the court that somebody, a prominent Nigerian, who produced a medical report. Mm -hmm. They, they found it to be fake. And that, that's, in fact, that, that's like a, 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 a little departure from what has been going on. Now, so people have over time exploited that angle where they'll make you come to court, make you look like you're seeing some forged medical reports. Now, normally you can't say, you don't understand or you don't know what somebody is going through. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes I, I can tell you for free that where arrest comes, it triggers you know, uh, emotional outburst. Yes. And sometimes somebody who is hypertensive, that can actually trigger it. It's, it's normal. It's something, it's a given. Now, but over time, we've seen people come up with funny things. Mm -hmm. We've seen people come to court with crutches. I mean, I think we grew up knowing a particular joke where somebody came to court and said he was, you know, he's sick, he's this, he's that. Then the, the judge asked, so what happened? He just threw the crutches down and he was describing for the judge. And the, the judge was able to say that, come on now. Nah, no, no, this is, this is not how it works. Now, so, but, but you see, so in, in, in certain instances where the court finds out that you're trying to, 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 to um, twist the law or you're trying to lie and find your way out of, you know, easily by using sickness or feigning sickness, mm -hmm. feigning illness, then that in itself is an offense that is different from what you came there to do. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that should be frowned at because in as much as we're trying to fight corruption, we're trying to clean the stable, because we, we can't lie to ourselves. Uh, things are not too well with, with the fight against corruption. So lawyers or actors in the temple of justice should not be aiding and abetting crime. 
these things should be frowned at. Now, people will come to you, they will dangle a lot of money in your face, but that is not the way it should go. Mm. The actors in, in, in the temple of justice are supposed to be noble men, and they're supposed to be credible individuals, and they're supposed to actually point things like that out to the court and make sure that we don't go in that direction. All right. When, when uh, someone who is supposed to stand trial, when he provides a medical report, is it taken, okay, you provide a medical report, so let's act on it, or there is a way to make verifications in the face of the realities of some of the drama that we've had or seen in the last few years is uh, does the court go to do does the court carry out a, a background check to verify uh, those kind of medical reports prior to when the whole drama mm -hmm. using your expression <laughs> came, you know normally when you produce a medical report mm -hmm. from a credible institution there's the presumption of regularity okay. that this thing is is issued by the right person by the right authority mm -hmm. and in the right circumstance now but over time when the court noticed this drama now they go and verify mm -hmm. in fact they verify your shorty they verify the property because i've seen I, I i practice so i've seen things i've seen people come with clone titles i've seen people you just ask a, a simple question and you know the person will just fall off now, so, so over time, the court has taken... Now, though there's an angle to it where sometimes verification can actually take longer than necessary. But you can't blame the court because where somebody brings a clone title or a fake medical report and you allow the person to go before you know it, the person has gone beyond Russia or you find the person... <laughs> <laughs> so it becomes difficult and then the court now looks incompetent. So what the court does now is they verify everything and make sure that this person, you know, you can't tell sometimes sickness, certain illness from the face. Mm. Now, but you have to go, then you have to establish a pattern. Yeah. Because I've seen in recent times, somebody who was hailed an artist, somebody who was arrested at a party, mm. all of a sudden, he gets to court, he's being prosecuted, then he has all kinds of diseases yeah. in the world. Yeah. Then by the time he's released, all at the, same there, time. the same person mm. goes back to his regular mm. living. Then you know that this was a sham. Mm. This, is not, this is not how it should be. Yeah. So, so that, that's what we have. All right. We have to leave you here now. Uh, thank you very much. I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that the courts are looking in this direction because uh, a, a lot of um, cases that need to be, you know, foreclosed and then, uh, you know, prosecution to be concluded sometimes get delays because of this. And I'm, uh, I'm glad the courts are looking into ways of handling that. Thank you so much, Lutumboso Oshufora, for coming on the program. My pleasure. Great.